All right, Jay Baba, everyone, we're back with our um, guests today, Jamie and Zoe Newell, and we're really excited to have everyone. Um, welcome, Manya. It's been a long time since we saw you. And uh, today is a, a special, actually, because uh, uh, we'll also be remembering uh, Tom Riley, uh, you know, who passed away last week. So uh, with, let's start with the prayers first. And then uh, Srinidhi, if you'd like to start saying the prayers, I'll share your screen. Right. <clears throat> Opa Vitika, the preserver and protector of all. You are without beginning and without end, non-dual, beyond comparison, and none can measure you. You are without color, without expression, without form, and without attributes. You are unlimited and unfathomable, beyond imagination and conception, eternal and imperishable. You are invisible, and none can see you but with eyes divine. You always were, always are, and always will be. You are everywhere, in, in everything. You are also beyond everywhere and beyond everything. You are in the firmament and in the depths. You are manifest and unmanifest on all planes and beyond all planes. You are in the three worlds and also beyond the three worlds. You are imperceptible and independent. You are the creator of the lords of lords, the knower of all minds and hearts. You are omnipotent and omnipresent. You are knowledge infinite, power infinite, and bliss infinite. You are the ocean of knowledge, all knowing, infinitely knowing, over the past, present, and future. Your knowledge itself. You are all merciful, eternally been loving. You are the souls of souls, one with infinite attributes. You are the trinity of truth, knowledge, and bliss. You are the source of truth, the ocean of love. You are the ancient one, highest of the high. You are Prabhu and Parameshwar. You are beyond God and beyond beyond God also. You are Bharat Brahma, Allah, Ilai, Yazdan, or Mazda, and God the Beloved. You are named Izzat, the only one worthy of worship. Thank you. Srinika, would you like to say a prayer today? She can't read. Okay. She's... If you know the beloved God, maybe you can say it. If you, either, if you can't read, that's okay. So, Hong, would you like to say the repentance prayer? All right. We repent, O oh God, most merciful for all our sins, for every thought that was false, unjust, or unclean, for every word spoken that ought not to have been spoken, for every deed done that ought not to have been done. We repent for every deed and word and thought inspired by selfishness and for every deed and word and thought inspired by hatred. We repent most specially for every lustful thought and every lustful action, for every lie, for all hypocrisy, for every promise given but not fulfilled, and for all slander and backbiting. Most specially also, we repent for every action that has brought ruin to others, for every word and deed that has given others pain, and for every wish that pain should befall others. In your abandoned mercy, we ask you to forgive us, O oh God, for all these sins committed by us, and to forgive us for our constant failures to think and speak and act according to your will. Thank you. Manya, ni beloved God prayer us na? You know that one? That's okay. Um, Soham or Srinidhi, anyone else wants to say it? I know we're having the kids join in a little bit. I can say it. Beloved God, help us all to love you more and more and more and more and still more till we become worthy of union with you and help us all to hold fast to Baba's thumb until the very end. Thank you, Jay Baba. All right. Um, so I actually wanted to get us um, started a little bit by, you know, remembering Tom. Um, I, I actually would like... Uh, to start off with uh, Jamie and Zoe, your earliest memories. I know you had mentioned something last time that you had come where you'd met Tom Riley. Uh, so can you just share something with us? Uh, and then it would be wonderful. To, we can just do a little around. So do you want to start or you want me to start? You have much more of a story about Tom. Um, I met him at in Schenectady, New York at Darwin Shaw's house in probably 1978 or nine. Um, and they were very old friends going back to, you know, the fifties with Baba. Um, and actually one thing I, I can just, Tom was a, he was very warm and he was very funny. And he, when he saw me, I mean, for years later, he would say, 
oh, you're my favorite Zoe. And I found out, you know, he did that with a lot of people, but he, you know, you're my favorite show part with so on. But he really made you feel that that was true. And so he just, he had this sort of genius for connecting and making everyone feel that you had some kind of a, a special connection with them. And he was just so glad you know, the day his day was good, but seeing you just made it even better. So that's that's the kind of person he was. That's beautiful. Thank you, Zoe. Go ahead, Jamie. Well, my uh, experience did now. What did I? I said something about this last week, didn't I? I don't remember. Yeah, that you met him in India. Yeah. Well, I, the thing is, he. Um, yeah, my very first trip to Marizad. I'd never met him before, but it was in a rickshaw with him going to Marizad. And uh, that isn't so significant, except that uh, when I was very young, when I was four years old, I had a very serious accident and I nearly died. I nearly bled to death. I went through a glass door and the door, the glass went through my arm and it uh, severed the arteries and the uh, and the nerves, I had no feeling in my arm and the doctors were saying they're going to have to amputate because they couldn't get it to work. My grandmother was a chiropractor and she worked with me. And I mean, the doctors did a very good job of surgery and they fixed it, but they'd never done this thing before where they had sewn nerves back together. Uh, and she taught me how to do uh, and work with me to do physical therapy and get the circulation back in my arm. And uh, she lived in Woodstock, New York. And because of that experience at four years old with her, we were very, 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 very close. And I would go summers and spend several weeks in the summer with her in Woodstock. And uh, just, um, she met the world. She, before Until I met the Mondley, she was probably the most important person in my life. And uh, so the first time I went to, I just independently, I found Baba's books in a uh, discourses in a bookstore. And I read them and I was very excited. I ended up eventually going to uh, Myrtle Beach and uh, while there, I met my first day or two there, I met Lynn Ott, the painter. And uh, they, they were having tea at their house. And he just, I didn't know who he was. I didn't know anything about Baba people. I, I just read books. Mm -hmm. So I um, sat down and he sat down next to me and he said, uh, asked me who I was and where I was from. And I said, I'm Jamie Newell. I'm from Boston. I said, uh, and what's your name? He said, I'm Lynn Ott. I said, oh, where are you from? He said, I'm from Woodstock. And I said, oh, that's, do you know my grandmother? She, she's a chiropractor there. She said, oh, she was my chiropractor. So my grandmother was Lynn Ott's chiropractor. This, is, this completely blew my mind, my very first time. And actually, before I, before I even tell you that, my grandmother had completely independently of me finding Bob in a bookstore and reading his books, I had wanted to borrow some books from my grandmother. And one of the, and she, I wanted to borrow one book. So I'm trying to get rid of some things. So she gave me a stack of these books. And in the stack, was Sparks of the Truth by Meher Baba. And I was just completely, and how did my grandmother get this book by Meher Baba? And I, I asked her, and she said, oh, one of my patients gave it to me. So I was astonished. And uh, that's all, I mean, she died very soon after that. And uh, it was only probably two years later. And I had not said anything to her about Baba. I, I'd been reading Baba, but I just, I kept it very kind of private to myself. Uh, but I then eventually made it to Myrtle Beach. And when I met Lynn, I said, so, you know, my grandmother, she was your carpet. I said, did you, you must be the person who gave her that book. And he said, no, I, I never, uh, I never spoke to her about Meher Baba. I just went to her for some treatments. So that was a mystery. But then uh, I met Audie K. Ronnie and Elizabeth Patterson and Kitty Davy and, and Audie encouraged me to come to India. And I, and I just adored Audie. And so I, uh, but by just a couple of months later, I went to to India and uh, my very first day there, I get in this rickshaw to go to Marizad and Tom Riley gets in and I say, is, you know, uh, he asked me who I am. I said, I'm Jamie Newell. I'm from Boston. I said, what's your name? He said, my name is Tom Riley. I said, where are you from? He said, I'm from Woodstock. And again, I'm just astonished. And uh, I said, did you know my grandmother? Uh, he said, what's your name? I said, she's a chiropractor. Her name is Audrey Hamilton. And he said, oh, she was my chiropractor. 
So she was also Tom Riley's chiropractor. And I asked him if he had given her that book. And he, at the time, he didn't remember giving it to her. But then years later, he, he did remember. And we were you know, very distracted with being in India and everything at the time. Uh, but anyways, that was, a, that was the beginning. And uh, it wasn't until years later that uh, when uh, I started coming to Myrtle Beach more often, uh, that uh, we, you know, we saw a lot of him and, you know, he was married by that time to Kathy Riley and we, uh, Kathy Haas at the time. And we, uh, you know, talked about that a lot. And it turns out we have lots of different connections, but he, he was a wonderful speaker about, he had two particularly dramatic and beautiful stories about meeting Baba first in 1958 and also meeting Baba at the 1962 East West gathering. And in the meantime, he had corresponded a lot with Adi K. Rani. And uh, so his stories about those events were very, very, very humorous and very, uh, also very intensely beautiful, just the experiences that he had with Baba, which would take a whole meeting to recount any of those. But they're, I know they've been recorded and I encourage you all to learn more about Tom. He's also a wonderful artist. It's, Woodstock was an art colony and a lot of my grandmother's patients were uh, artists and musicians and people like that that uh, that had come to Woodstock because it had this this atmosphere there. Yeah, thank you. Um, actually, I uh, before you know, I I, I would just want to kind of take a quick um, you know turn before I ask all the kids. But so we, I met Tom. I think Sohom was maybe a year old, so about thirteen years ago. But you know, in, in DC, I was just happening to happening to visit. Uh, but Kathy and, uh, you know, like, I, I think at the Asheville Music Service is when we started meeting them. Um, and they started coming to our children's Sahavas via uh, Skype at that time. So I have a picture that I would like to share uh, as I was going through today. Uh, and this is Tom. Uh, and, you know, Kathy would sing and then Tom would come and tell the stories to the kids. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but oh, I don't know why I did that. But um, this here, um, this is in our basement and all the kids, we have a theater room. So we were projecting the, mm -hmm. the video and then the kids would try to, and they were really little at that time. So as she would play or somebody would play, they'd try to go touch <laughs> this. Yeah. But it, it was such a beautiful, uh, you know, encounter. Uh, and that was one of our first ones with him. As you can see, everybody's seated here trying to watch the video of Tom telling stories. Um, but yeah. This was uh, then when they were really, really little. Uh, but wow. that's, uh, and then this is um, right there. There's another one of Tom and Kathy. So it's been an amazing, uh, I think, journey for us. And obviously, I saw you guys in October, and I got to spend some time with you guys and uh, them as well. So it was really wonderful. But Yeah, Tom um, was there on, the, on that little yeah, porch the there. Porch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but... We also have had the uh, two of our members here, Srinidhi and Sahana, had the um, fortune to interview him, actually, Wow! about the East West Gathering. So Srinidhi, would you like to start off? OK. Um, wait, what's the thing about? <laughs> so you know how you remember Tom? Yeah. Was, yeah. So he passed away last week. So we're just trying to remember him. So you and Sahana interviewed him, right? So do you want to share yeah. any of your memories about the interview and how it felt? So um, it was the, it was like my first time interviewing anybody. I remember I got interviewed for like this thing in um, fifth grade, but that was like the first thing, like interview. Um, I think we interviewed him on the 1960. Four two sixty two or sixty four um yeah 62. the east west sixty two yeah east west gathering um uh yeah what was your favorite part do you have any favorite part that you would like to share all of it was pretty fun um felt nice to like it felt really formal and yeah. I didn't have a favorite. All of it was really good. All right. How about Sana? Um, 
for me, just it was very powerful. Like listening, I mean, uh, listening to him to Tom talk. Um, yeah, I, I guess it was really powerful. Can I share what you share? No. no, no. What was what was powerful about it? But how do you mean powerful? Um. Well, the way he was like, um, like he has like a very quiet voice, but um, uh, I think it's hard to explain though. But um, what is it? What for me was powerful is his descriptions of Meher Baba and being with Meher Baba. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. Like that, I guess. Okay. Yeah, Srinidhi, I remember, um, I think we started talking and you had shared how you felt Baba's presence in the lagoon cabin, right? With your dad? I think yeah. I remember that as part of the conversation. What? Uh, with your, remember when you were at the lagoon yeah. cabin? I think how, because he explained how, you know, when he'd come back from India, it was really tough for him. So that's when he started building the house. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. with the, he borrowed a book from the library and started building the house to be able to kind of come back, I guess, <laughs> to to normalcy. Um, but yeah, so there are some things that uh, Sana put a few pictures together, which I'd like to share real quick uh, while um, somebody else wants Shilpa. to talk about him. Shilpa? Yeah, go ahead, Amma. Uh, I sent few uh, pictures of ours with uh, okay. uh, Tom and Kathy to you now yeah. in WhatsApp. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's Tom right there at the East West Gathering. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show pictures from WhatsApp uh, because I'm on the computer, but if somehow you can share, uh, otherwise, if you want to share any memories, that would be nice. So let's send you to me. Do you want to just say a few words? Uh. You want me to say? Yeah, you can share. Yeah. Uh, we met uh, Tom and Kathy, and then first time we, in Asheville Music Service, uh, Kathy was uh, like me and Manjusha, and Kathy was uh, in that uh, workshop. She was teaching us. And then uh, in 2017, me, Shilpa, and Soham, and I, and, and my son, Nara, and we all went there and uh, went to visit their house also. We stayed there for some time. And that time, uh, Tom, he narrated how he met uh, our beloved Baba at the first time. And he, he was showing his gestures also. Uh, just now I found some uh, video just because I was searching all the time. And just now I got the, uh, those uh, pictures and I forwarded in, on WhatsApp to Shilpa now. Uh, th that was there. And uh, that time we had a very good time with them too. Even in their house, uh, uh, Soham and uh, my other, uh, uh, the grandson, I and both, they played the guitar and piano there. Just they were a little bit of that one. And uh, Tom narrated his uh, first day, how he met Baba, how the ba Baba's gestures were there. They, he just, he was, he wanted to throw like that to this, I'm showing this and throw, throwing this like this to him, like without uh, that gesture also, everything he, he mentioned. And uh, recently we went to me, Manjusha, Morali and my husband, we went to Metal Beach in December uh, from, and we stayed there uh, from 16th uh, December to 19th December. Me and Manjusha, we stayed in this uh, Mani and Mehra's cabin and my husband and Morali, he stayed in a different uh, cabin there. And then uh, that time uh, at Ban, we met them. Uh, and I have a picture of them also when I, we met them, uh, we met them at Bam, uh, Kathy and uh, Tom. They were really enjoying, they were entertaining all the, those visitors out there and they were waiting for them and uh, they were giving their tour and they were talking more about uh, the Baba and how they were doing all that, uh, uh, how happy they were there being, staying there. And in fact, they invited us to their house also, but that day, uh, the, uh, their nephew, I think he was supposed to go there. So that's why we couldn't go there. And then later on, they told we can, in the next visit, we can go and visit them. And uh, then afterwards, when I got this uh, news about Tom and all, really, it was very recently we met them and it was really shocking for us and uh, uh, very cheerful and nice couple and always entertaining everyone and they live their life happily uh, entertaining and uh, doing Baba others and, they are making everyone happy and, and uh, 
uh, doing Baba's work. Yes, mm -hmm. and their house also a lot of things. Uh, the Tom first time when we all went uh, Shilpa and uh, we all went uh, to their house. That time they showed us. Uh, he's so they are so talented. They paintings and and they have a picture when uh, they was and uh, he's just gathering when he, he was sitting in front of Baba. That one also that uh, everything they showed and uh, it was very uh, loving memories for us. And uh, that uh, that is that is real life. Uh, even now, uh, because we met them recently, we saw them and we sat with them for some time and we were talking to them. Uh, all that, uh, the, those are really uh, something. Uh, uh, so it has become, life has become so unpredictable as always it has been. And nowadays it is more of because of so many other, like present circumstances, different circumstances and all that. Uh, and, uh, nowadays it is very difficult for everybody to go through all that. But still, uh, uh, it is like a shocking news when I heard about uh, Tom and uh, about this news. Uh, that's what I can Thank I you, can Amma. Tell. All right, and, Soham, how about you? Jai Baba. You want to do quickly share something and then we'd like to start with the program? Yeah, so I remember um, we went to Myrtle Beach a couple years ago and we were invited to their house and he was telling stories about his experiences with Baba. And I think, I think we also had Idlis there, right? And like, and like little like Pyrex cups. That was pretty cool. Awesome, thank you. Shout out to everybody. Oh, I'm so sorry, so many people. I think, I'm trying to remember, it was another event, but I'm not, I'm not really sure where. Okay, we can share when you remember. Because it was a couple of years ago. I don't yeah. remember a lot of stuff. Go ahead, 2017, so, huh? Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. Thanks, yeah. Shilpa. Hi, Jimmy and Joe. It's wonderful to meet you. So Tom Jai really, Baba. Jai Baba. Tom really and uh, Kathy were like beautiful couple. <laughs> they were, yeah. It's like a combo of uh, Baba stories, beautiful stories and music. <laughs> they were like, yeah. And when we first met them at the Myrtle Beach, it was like really beautiful way. Um, they invited uh, to their house and then we went to their house and they showed all the Baba's uh, stories and the, uh, everything, the artwork of uh, Tom. It was really amazing. And then it's uh, the, uh, how he says everything in a funny way. Between my head, enjoy, <laughs> and then we were. And Shilpa used to do the students of us back then, and then we used to have the Skype with the uh, Kathy and Tom. We enjoyed kids used to enjoy them watching them there, and then now at the Zoom also Baba Zoom, the Tom and Kathy came so many times they were, <laughs> and then the kids able to uh, interact with them. They had a good time, <laughs> so. Yeah, they're very, yeah, amazing. And, yeah. and then um, the last time we were personally met them at the Blood Archives, New Jersey, in 2020, the Baba birthday time, right? It was a, a beautiful time with them, and we, right, Shilpa? Yeah, we had- um, Kids actually yeah. performed with Kathy. Right, and Shilpa, this kids, um, they made perform along with the Kathy and the Tom stories were amazing. <laughs> that was a really good fortune time that time. So Tom was uh, like amazing, <laughs> very sweet. Jai Baba. Okay. All right, Jai Baba. I think um, if uh, everybody uh, is good, would we like to would like to start with the program? I see somebody else joined. Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Maybe, maybe later. <laughs> All right. Uh, Zoe, I know you'd like to uh, share some stories and stuff. I would love to get started with you. Okay. Um, and we have, what, 30 minutes left or how long? Oh, sorry. We, we have till 5.30. We got a good amount of time. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Um, well, just one other thing about Tom um, I'm remembering for, he used to, he used to joke with us. He he would joke about being drunk. 
and how he liked to drink vodka. And uh, so he made, all, he would pretend a lot of the time that he was, he was drinking vodka. Um, but he also, he loved ice cream. He really loved ice cream. And I remember a couple of years ago, I think it, it may have been his birthday, but uh, he and Kathy called us and we got together with him and some other people in the um, refectory at the center. And it was just like, bring ice cream. So we did, everybody brought um, their favorite. And I remember Tom saying, oh, and this one's for me. You know, there was one large container of what, what was his favorite, Jamie? It was something about caramel nut something. I don't remember. Yeah. It was, it was something, something odd that I would never have had. It was something sort of complicated, not Rocky Road, but something sort of complicated. Yeah. yeah. And, pecan. Uh, it was something pecan, something caramel pecan or something. Right. You know, that reminds me when we went to their house in October, we definitely had ice cream. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was oh, he, he was he was he never drank. He was joking about drink, but he definitely liked ice cream. He would also say uh, sometimes, depending on who was there, if it was just a, a close group, he would say, well, and, and when I'm done, Kathy will go around and collect your money. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he had quite a few jokes about the, when the kids were interviewing him uh, with money. And, and he said, uh, so how much are you going to pay me? <laughs> this uh I, I don't know if you guys remember that but it was, it was really wonderful uh but yeah um you guys have the floor both of you um however you'd like to start today we're here and all ears <laughs> well so Shopa, you may have seen on facebook that i have a book that's just come out um and in fact i haven't even seen the finished book yet they, I'm not sure, I think maybe the publicity department jumped the gun in <laughs> announcing this, uh, I'm not sure. Um, but it's about um, stories from the Ramayana. And I, I thought I'd like to talk a little bit about, about that. I mean, not just the book, but about the story of Ram. And I don't know how well you, some of you kids know that story do you know about do you know the story of ram yeah well how about we ask uh, by a show of hands how many of you know that means you have to yeah there you go sahana what about you i know you know but we'd like to see your hand <laughs> well zoe likes to uh she sees a lot of uh, sometimes parallels between things that Baba did and things that go on in the Ramayana and that would remind her of things. And... Awesome. Go ahead. Yeah. So, okay. So not, oh, it doesn't matter. I just wondered. Um, the thing is, when I was a kid, uh, before I met the Shaws and, came and found Baba, I had a teacher who was Indian and he was a great storyteller. And he particularly loved Ram's stories. And things would be going on around us and this would remind him of something, you know, in, in Ram's life or in Krishna's life. And so yeah, he- would, What was his name? His, his name was Ramamurti Mishra. Um, yeah, the first book is Flying Monkeys, Oh, I mean, no, this is the second book. Sorry, Flying Monkeys, Floating Stones is the book that's just, that's just coming out. Um, and so I, because of him, I was very aware, I had kind of had Ram and that whole narrative in my mind. And when I first went to the center, somebody took me on a tour of the center and we went to the barn. And I remember walking on the path through the forest and coming out at the barn in this clearing and just feeling like I was there. I was in the Ramayana. This was Rama's refuge in, in the forest. And that's kind of stayed with me 
and as you probably do know in the in the story rama is meant to be king but uh right before this is going to his coronation is going to take place his one of his stepmothers becomes jealous and she demands that he should he should go into exile for 14 years her son should become the king and ram just says oh you know yes he agrees to go he doesn't argue and with his beloved wife sita um they they go and they wander around india and go and live in the forest with uh, the with some yogis and actually have and his brother is with him also and actually they're very happy you know so they give up give up this whole royalty thing and go and live a very simple everyday life and it seems to me that Bama did something similar when he went on his new life. I mean, he wasn't the king, but he gave up being a spiritual authority. He gave up whatever comforts he had. Um, and he went and wandered around India with, with his Sita, with Mara and some other people he had a few more people with him than ram but not a lot and he just led this very simple life and one of the last and in in my mind you know he he came he finished the new life and then very soon afterwards came to the center and so in my mind it's almost like the center and you know, the barn itself were part of that journey for Baba. And in the story of Ram, you know, the avatar has to come periodically when things have gotten really out of hand here on earth and people are not doing, not behaving well. Um, and in, in Ram's story, the kind of the bad guy the demon ravana has acquired the boon that he cannot be defeated by any deity he can only so he he thinks he's safe and he can do whatever he wants but he hasn't taken into consideration human beings or animals and so in this case, the avatar comes as Ram, but as a as a man, very much as a man, and he's veiled throughout a lot of his life. He doesn't really know that he's really the avatar, um, and that I think it was similar with Baba that he he was born into this, you know, kind of ordinary Parsi family, he went to school, he had rode his bike, he played cricket, he, you know, he had his friends and his clubs. Um, he didn't, there, it's not, he wasn't the kind of spiritual master who, you know, at age seven says, I'm giving it all up to go and be a monk or something. He, and so I see those parallels too between Ram and Baba. And that, that makes me happy. <laughs> I, I like being able to see, to make those connections. It makes Ram more real and it makes Baba, I don't know, it lets me think about Baba in a different way. And also, so Bob, so then Baba went and wandered around India in the new life, and as Ram did, and he even visited at least one place we know about, Happy Valley. Near Marizad, where Ram went with Sita. And they, the story I heard was that she, they'd been walking, you know, it was very dusky and hot, and she was tired and she really wanted a bath. And so Ram takes his bow and he shoots an arrow into the earth, and a spring comes up. 
and she was able to bathe in the spring and cool herself off. And when we went to, we visited that place, and maybe you've been there, yeah. Um, we went there with Erich. We went there with Erich, yeah. And I remember coming to this. Marathon? Pardon? How far is it from Marathon? Four miles. Oh. Yeah, just a couple of kilometers, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Baba actually walked, walked there, there. Yeah. With the Lady Mondwe. Yeah. Um, from Marathon. Yeah. yeah. He I did that on Zoe's birthday, actually. Oh, that's awesome. I, I think you have a question in a bit, so whenever you're finished with your Okay, no, go ahead. What's the question? Oh, Manya, go ahead, sweetheart. I know that in the story she told us that she, they had to go and she and she just saw a deer, a golden deer, yes. and she wanted it, but her, his husband Ram told that it's not really because the demon Ravana wa wanted to take Sita to his to Lanka, so yeah. So Ram, so Ram told her that's not real. That's something that someone has made up. But she told him that she wanted it. So he had to go and told his brother Lakshmana, you look after Sita. But right. when, when he got the deer, it was a demon of the of Rama, Ravana, but he was a good one. But he told him, but he said, I, I don't want to do that. But then he said, Ravana just said, when he said he doesn't want to do it, to act like a lady, lady dear. So he said, then Ravana said, so he said that, if you don't do that, I will just kill you. But but he said, I want to be killed in Ram's hands. So he went and he had to do it. And Ram just caught him with his arrow. So then he just said, Rama. No, he said Lakshmana in Ram's language. So... He had to go, but then with his magical arrow, he just made a line. So he told Sita to not go. If she was with the line, she were, she was not supposed to go above the line. So she did that. Then Ravana came and to just came in an old man one. So he just asked for food. And then when she gave him no, not below, not going up, not just going to give him walking. So she just stopped where she went and Ford told him to take it, but he said, I want you to come here walking and pour me it. So she had to do it. But when she poured it, he the demon, demon, demon Ravana just turned into his real thing and took Sita. Good job. Wow. Thank you, Thank you, you for sharing. You know those stories good. You yeah. know those right. stories very well. The stories. All right. Well, let's, uh, I really appreciate you sharing, Manya. Awesome. So, um, Zoe, are you impressed? <laughs> I am that, very that answers, impressed. That answers the question if everybody knows who Rama is. 
Manya, in 2018, we visited Sri Lanka and we went to the Tashok Vatka and all that. Ah. <laughs> there we visited that place in Sri Lanka. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the, the story she's narrated, we visited that place. Uh-huh. It, was, it is in Sri Lanka. <laughs> that is called Ashok Vatka. That is it. <laughs> you didn't see any flying monkeys, did you? <laughs> I didn't see it. I know oh. that there's a monkey who had drama. Look who was that? For Sita. Who was that monkey? You know his name? His name is Hanuman. Oh. Right. His oh, footprint is also He's there. a good monkey. <laughs> yes. Oh. And then that, Ashokwat, that his footprint is also that big one. This, uh, yes, I need to fly. fly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to read Zoe's book then. <laughs> oh, she doesn't have to. She knows all the stories already. She already knows, yeah. <laughs> I already have watched the movie of it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was one benefit of uh, with the kids is they were, there was a lot of um, animated movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. But anyway, continue, Zoe. Zoe would like to see animated movies I of would. the Ramayana. You know, funny enough, they're all on YouTube and in English. So really? You can find a lot of them before we end up purchasing CDs. But if you do Ramayana in English, it'll come up. Wow. Or wow. some on Netflix too. I don't know if they're there anymore, but they were at one point. Well, the, and there was that long, that huge epic TV. Oh, story. yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. But anyway, let, let's go back to the references. And I, you know, you. I'm so glad you brought that up. So because I was thinking about that with new life, right? Uh, I mean, a while back, it was like a passing thought. And I go, wow, that's kind of similar. But uh, I, I love the, the similarities. Uh, so, yep. <laughs> Well, also, you know, uh, in the way Zoe tells it, the I mean, I've always thought about the new life, really. it People tend to think that it ended before the Mononash. Other people say it included the Mononash, but I feel like it included Baba's first trip to Myrtle Beach as well, and uh, and even the accident, and, and uh, that this whole, I mean, this makes us, when we go on pilgrimage to the Mayor Center, it's like we're going into the forest with Ravana, uh, with uh, Rama, not Rama. Ravana. I hope not with Ravana, but we, uh, we, we're we getting to have a little uh, retreat in Ram's forest yeah. sanctuary. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that is amazing. Um, what do you guys say about that? Uh, let, let, you wanna, I want to hear the, the kids. Uh, what do you guys think, Srinidhi, Soham, Sahana? Uh, do you guys agree? Do you see the parallels? Soham, what about you? What was the question? I said, do you see the parallels of Rama going into, you know, Banvas, right? Or the, the 14 years of exile and then how Baba went on new life. And new life, yeah. remember- I, I do because I feel like a lot of the gods, especially, they all seem to go through like a period where they have to suffer. And I guess it's for the better of mankind. Yeah. Absolutely. What about you, Srinidhi? I do agree. Um, like it, all of the stories are all very similar. And um, yeah. Cool. All right. Thank you. Uh, anybody else before we go back to Zoe? Sahana, would you like to share anything? No. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. All right. Go ahead. So. And it's. I think it's interesting that there. Baba himself made some parallels and comparisons between people or events in his life and and Ram's. Uh, and he. One of them was the dog warrior. Who was a he? He was a. Uh, I think a uh, Tibetan mastiff or um, anyway, Baba had said that he needed a dog for a particular piece of work he was doing. And he never really explained. And they said, well, we have dogs. And he said, no, this has to be a new, fresh, intelligent, particular dog. And then somebody brought Mera this puppy and Baba said, that's my dog. 
and he said that he said that this dog was not really a dog but sort of a spiritual somebody who had come from the spiritual plane and yeah he said some rishi right and i think it was mustan if i'm not mistaken was it oh maybe it was mustan i, I was now i was thinking it was warrior but anyway yeah yeah maybe. So, so can you tell us the reference of Rama wanting the dog? I, I don't know if that's a very popular story. It's not that, no, but he said that this dog, uh, warrior or Mastan, whichever one it was, um, was like his Hanuman. Oh. That there was something about an animal in the avatar's work that play, the animal could play a role that no human being could. And I, he didn't explain a whole lot more than that, but it's just, it's interesting. Um, but another thing about that, <laughs> this came actually from a Pasni Maharaj and uh, Mino, Mino Barucha. Yeah. Mino Barucha told us that Maharaj said that Queen Victoria was Ravana's, Mina said sister, although then there's a version that says she was his niece, but, and that because this sister of Ravana's really wanted Ram, and if you remember, I mean, there is the sister who appears in the forest and tries, wants to kill Sita so she can marry Ram. Um, and then there's this other figure who is a sister or niece who, when Sita is kidnapped in Lanka, one of the women guards was a member of Ravana's family who was very kind to Sita. And so it's not clear to me which one of these people, but at any rate, that, that person, um, because of her attachment to Ram, because she wanted to kind of rule his kingdom and be part of that, she, she, was, she was born as Queen Victoria. And in that way, she got to rule Rama's kingdom, India, but only for a limited time. And what about all the British who were supposed to be... Uh... Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's part of Mahar, one of Maharaja's stories that um, that the monkeys who rescued Sita. Okay, once the battle was over, Sita was rescued. Sita said, "We have to thank these people, these monkeys." What would you like? They said, "We would like a, a meal that." you cooked with your own hands for us, Sita. And Ram said, I'm not sure that's a good idea. Ask for something else. And they said, no, we want that. And she said, no, I said anything. So they, they can have it. So Ram said, okay. So Sita fixes a meal for all of the monkeys. And then they have to go take a bath in the ocean to somehow purify themselves. But those monkeys who had fought Ravana and rescued Sita, they became the British. Uh, and Ravana's sister or niece, whichever one it was, became Queen Victoria. So there's this connection, even though it's a little unclear, between uh, colonial India and Queen Victoria, who did love India very much, apparently, um, and uh, Rama's story. And I can't, I mean, I can't really tell it better than that because I'm a little, I don't know. When Mina was telling us the story, he said she was Ravana's sister. And I said, you mean the one who got her nose cut off? And he said, yeah, I guess so. But then I read, <laughs> I read something with, I, I don't know if Mina was confused or there were two versions anyway. 
Um, well, Minu also was, but it, you should you should explain also that Minu was he was an old Parsi man when we knew him. He was an old Parsi man who had been an electrician. He'd gone to school with Jal and Padri, and he met them in Gnostic just on the road, no follower of Baba or anything. But then, uh, little by little, Baba said, "Oh no, he's your old friend. You should come to the ashram." So he would hang out at the ashram with his buddies Padri and Jal, and eventually became very devoted to Baba. And then Baba sent him and his wife to Upasthi Maharaj. But Baba actually wanted a spy there because he wanted to know what uh, he was always saying that Upasthi Maharaj wanted to take away some of his suffering, and he didn't want Upasthi Maharaj to do that. So he would send. Uh, but he still wanted to know you. He loved Upasthi and he wanted to be communicate with Upasthi. So he would send uh, Minu to uh, to stay some time with Upasthi Maharaj. And then Minu would come back and Baba would pull him aside. He said, what was the old man doing? Tell me about what the old man was doing. And he was telling these stories and everything. And so that's why Minu was, a, he spent a lot of time with Upasthi Maharaj and Upasthi Maharaj would, would tell these stories to everybody. And that's how Minu got them. Yeah, but Minu was Zoroastrian and he didn't even really know completely the, uh, you know, the Ramayana stories or anything. So that's how we, I think he got it confused. Who is this, uh, Jimmy? Hmm? Is, what's his last name? Minu Barucha. Barucha. Okay. Yeah, he... Um, he and his wife, Aimai, his wife, Aimai, was very sick, and she actually ended up living at the ashram with Upasthi Maharaj for a long time. He took care of her, and he didn't want her to leave. They had a very sweet relationship. That she stayed with the Kanyas there, and uh, but they lived it. When we went, our first couple trips to Maribad, uh, they were living in where Ted had lived for a while, which is the interview cabin at Lower Maribad. They lived there. And then uh, I might died and uh, Minu moved to one of the other back cabins, but uh, he lived there right until he died, which was where early 90s, something like that, mid 90s. Yeah, I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Lisa yeah. and Mark were there when he died, so they could tell us. But yeah. And me and Minu um, met. Narayan Maharaj. Too. Narayan Maharaj, Baba John. Yeah. Upasani Maharaj. All not, Sai, not, Sai not, Baba, no. not Sai Baba, but I think all the, all the, the other others. perfect masters. Yeah. And well, uh, well Baba John, he said they would see when he was when he was a little boy, he and Padri and Jal would be running around the streets of Pune and they would see her and they'd run, they would be scared. Everybody thought she was a witch and she, they were terrified of her, and so they would just run away and uh, not you know, but they would see her all the time around uh Pune. Does anyone have any questions for Zoe uh, or Jamie? Yeah, go ahead, Manya. I know I don't have any questions, but I know that my my grand my dad's mom went to went with went where Sai Baba was. Ah, oh. but yeah, we he went. But didn't meet Sai Baba. Yeah, we went there too. Minu Barucha took us there. He he showed us that place. He showed us the Kandoba temple where Apostle hit Baba with the stone in his forehead. And he took us to Sikori where all the, and we did the Kanyas there, the nuns there. Uh, we met, uh, what was her name? Uh, Godavri Mai. Godavri and Mai. Uh, and the, the nuns all there fed us. They made a beautiful uh, meal of, uh, was it Puri and uh, Indian spicy uh, dal and rice and things. I have a question. I I know that where do you live? Because here we have a Sai Baba temple. Oh, uh, there you have a Sai Baba temple. We used here to live in America. Uh huh. Yeah, we used to live in Nashville, Tennessee. With there's a big, um, uh, Ganpati temple there, uh, in Nashville. And we used to go there quite a lot, but uh, we're in Myrtle Beach and there's no, lots of churches in Myrtle Beach, but no temples. But I think there's a beach. There is definitely a beach. There's a beach. Because my, we, I think I've been to Metal Beach. Yeah, I think you have too. Because I just have a big thing that says Metal Beach. Well, you must've got it here then. <laughs> So cute, Manya. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, Soham Srinidhi Sahana? No, I guess so. I guess not. 
Awesome. No, this is amazing, Zoe. Any other parallels that you guys can give us? Uh, Shilpa, I sent that uh, video and that, uh, this one. Okay. So can email. okay. Um, that's, those are some of the main ones. Um, yeah. What is, um, I mean, so, oh, go ahead. You're, oh, you're... well, no, I just thought of, um, there's a story about, it's Ram and the boatman, and yeah, um, they, they're, they need to cross the river, the Ganges to get to, to get where they're going. And uh, the, the boatman there, Kevit, knows who Ram is. And he really wants to touch his feet. But for some reason, he is reluctant to admit that he knows who he is. So they negotiate, can you take me across in your boat and finally Yes, uh, he gives he gives them a ride, and then afterwards, um, well, first he objects. He says because he says, "Wait, I do know who you are, and your feet are magic. I know that you, with your feet, you touched the this woman, and then she, she turned into a statue." This is a Hindu story. Uh, so, what if you step in my boat? and my boat turns into something. Um, so I can't take you. And then the, finally they negotiate, yes, he will take him. And when he, they get out, uh, Sita wants to give him her ring and he refuses. And finally he says, well, can I just touch your feet? And uh, Ram says, yes. So that's the payment that he extracts is to be allowed to touch his feet which is what he wanted all along. But Baba, I think, drew a parallel sort of between this being carried across the river um, in the boat and the episode when he and Eretz were traveling and they were traveling in a boat and got dumped into this really very dirty river and uh, Erich pulled him out. And he said to Erich that you, because you pulled me out of this muddy water, I will pull you out of the, I, I won't let you drown in Maya, basically. I'll pull you out of the waters of illusion. So that wasn't exactly saying, he didn't say Erich was the boatman, but he, they, they were kind of, reminiscent of each other. So that is one more. Jamie, are you? Yeah, go, do you, can you don't you don't you know a song about the boatman? I I don't really. Rama called Shuri knows a song about the boatman. Um, and she You're sang, learning it. You, you haven't learned it yet. I, I can't sing it. Uh, no. So it's, there's it's, a song about the boatman. That's so interesting. Yeah. Okay. That Rama, you know, Baba's wife, Ram, Rama Kalchuri sang to Baba and he liked it very much. Now, um, so going, moving on with that story where, you know, ba, um, not Baba, sorry, Erich fell into the water, right? Uh, I mean, Baba fell into the water and Erich was trying to help him. They both you, fell in, yeah. Yeah. So I know it continues with like some boys that they find, right? Uh, who try well, to that's, how, that's how it got dumped in the water. The boys were swimming around and playing. Okay. And uh, and they got, the, I mean, it was an accident, but they got too rough and they they dumped the boat. And when Baba and Erich went into the water, they took off, so they didn't get in trouble. But then Erich often told this story for the two reasons. One was he said, Baba said, one day I'll pull you out of the filth of, you pulled me out of the filthy river, I'll pull you out of the filth of illusion. But also because Erich said that was the only time he knew in his life with Baba, that Baba was alone. 
he had to go and get he didn't they didn't baba did, this is typical of baba baba didn't want mara to find out he was he was like oh mara will be upset if she finds out that i got all dirty and everything so you have to go back sneak back get some clothes and don't let anybody see you and then uh, bring them here and i'll change and clean up and mara will never know so she said okay right and i think erich was very nervous about leaving baba alone right yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. And he said that's the only time he could remember uh, Baba being alone in the time that he had been with him. And there's another time very, very early <coughs> in the Mansley meme time, just before they established the uh, Maribad ashram, where everybody left and Baba went just for, I think, for maybe 24 hours or something. He went on a train ride somewhere and then uh, came back. But those are the only two periods. Every other time he had people keeping diaries he had a night watchman every moment so he every moment of baba's life not only was there someone with him but usually something was written in the diary about what's going on that's why we have you know thousands and thousands of pages of uh, and a lot of it hasn't even been a lot wasn't included in the uh, in, in lord mayhair there's still many many diaries that haven't been published and lots of things in baba's life that every moment there was someone with him there's no there's kind of no mysteries about what was going on in baba's life which is completely unheard of with any avatar in history we were lucky if we have any that the most information we have is about the prophet muhammad and then you know less of uh, jesus and then even less of the buddha and then everything else is pretty much just legend But Baba, we have meticulous detail. It's amazing. Um, so, so um, I know, I know both of you. I mean, you have like some. Um, since you're a PhD with like the theology and stuff, I mean, is there any other parallels that you guys can draw? Because I always find that you know, um, uh, just one of the things, especially with Rama and Sita, is how you know Rama's main aim was always to make her happy right i mean which is why he went after the deer and baba always said right like you know yeah whatever makes mehra happy i think money also said that right once like if you know mehra said the world was flat would you agree <laughs> and he said yes yeah, yeah. that's true like, that's so true. right i'm not sure yeah um and money also pointed out something that's very interesting that um I mean, she didn't say it exactly the way I'm going to say it, but he worked with Mara in very much the same way he worked with the musts. The, the musts, he, he wanted to keep them in a good mood always for his work. It was important that they always be in a good mood. He would give them as many beaties as they wanted, as many whatever food they wanted, anything. He wanted them to be happy. He would bathe them and, you know, coddle them in all kinds of ways. And he did the same thing with, he would do anybody he was working with. In other words, even in... Uh, in just a regular uh, give and take, if he if he was doing some work through someone, he would be very very sweet and kind of coddled them so that they would be in a mood where somehow his work would be effective. And he did that with the Mus. He did it with Mara. And Adi, I remember on one of his talks, Adi K. Rani, someone got him on the subject, and he would get, he was very uh, he would get angry because he didn't he, he he didn't blame Mara. He knew it wasn't Mara's fault. But if Mara said that she, oh, Baba, there, I was making this for you and I need this certain kind of button and, and I don't have this button. How can I get this button? And Baba would send Adi to get it and they didn't have it in Abhinavi. Adi would have to, he's running the whole, the finances of the ashram. He'd have all these things to do. And he would send Adi to Bombay to get the special button that uh, Mara wanted so that she could make this shirt for Baba. And Adi would say, doesn't this woman realize what she's, you know, but Mara didn't know that she was upsetting. She just said, Baba, I want this button. And Baba would turn everything upside down so that she would be happy. And she was only doing it to make Baba happy. So it's just a really interesting uh, cycle of love going back and forth, which had these replications that uh, poor Adi had to uh, pick up the pieces of. You know, I remember Mani one time in, we were in Mondley Hall, and I don't know quite what we were talking about, but she said, you know, <coughs> you young ones don't realize that ba that Mera represented the creation. And I thought, I had not heard that put that way before. Um, but yeah, so Baba's relationship with Mera was on one hand was about her, but also had to do, I think, with, you know, God's 
relationship with us and with the world and try wanting always to keep it safe and happy <laughs> um, and then the world i mean like when sita gets transfixed with this golden deer and says oh i have to have that golden deer and, um she actually argues with ram because he says no i don't think that's really a deer you know uh, but she says yes i want it and she gets temporarily caught up in craving i guess uh, with with disastrous results to her um but i mean in the end it, it is okay uh, but I, that's just something to think about um and the mera i mean if baba is ram mera is sita i mean she never went around acting like she was anything special but certainly she was she she was as integral a part of his advent as anyone i mean it's almost like he couldn't fully be the avatar without her she she grounded him she represented us i, I mean i don't even it's beyond my ability to you said that he said to her one time, he said to her, I as Baba love you as Mara more than I as Ram loved you as Sita. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. and then she said, and then she said, and he told me some other things, but I shouldn't talk about that now. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what he told her, but uh, it must have been very nice. But so I do appreciate you explaining that because, you know, I always wondered how Mehra represented the, you know, the creation or the Maya, right? And it, it, so it kind of helps at least me understand um, because yes, you're right. I think she was more like a childlike, uh, you know, personality, right? Very innocent. And um, like you said, little things that she thought would make Baba happy, but yeah, because, and you also hear because, you know, she's considered the purest being on, you know, at that time. And Baba said, like, you know, nobody loves me the way she does. And it's so pure. So I always wondered, how does she represent Maya if she's such a pure being? <laughs> mm -hmm. Jamie? Ma'am? Yes, ma'am? I, I think the time is almost done with the bhajana. I want you to sing one Baba song. You want me to sing one Baba song? Are you in charge of the meeting now? <laughs> no. Have you, but have, I... you take, have, you, <laughs> have you taken over? No. I see. The, never underestimate the power of a attractive young woman. So, uh, what? Oh, what what is? You, what? What's? Uh, what's going on, Shilpa? I, I, I respect your wishes, Manya, 100%, but I respect <laughs> Shilpa's wishes 200%. Oh, that is so sweet. No, we're definitely here. Uh, and yes, um, before we get to the song, if that's okay with you, Jamie, um, anyone else would like to ask any questions? Uh, and I did want to quickly uh, show a picture that my mother-in-law sent of, uh, you know, um, uh, Tom and Kathy. Soham, Sahana, Srinidhi, uh, and Tina and Etsy, and I know you guys are here too. So just uh, Jay Baba to everyone. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, do Tina, you guys Tina the Tween? Is she Tina the Tween? Oh. <laughs> She's Tina the Queen. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I'm a I'm an honorary Tina age ager. Oh, a <laughs> Tina ager. Aha. Oh, like Very good. <laughs> Okay. Um, all right. Soham, do you have any questions? What do you think of this discussion that we've had so far? I think it was pretty interesting learning about a lot of these uh, these things and how like aspects of different about, gods are connected. Like, parallels between Ramayan um, and and you know Baba's advent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's also something I always thought of, like even with Krishna, right? Where 
you know, the, 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 the story of Baba with the cobra, you know, when he's a baby and how, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when Krishna is leaving, or rather his father is taking him from the jail to, um, oh my goodness, where is it? Not Dvarka, right? Is it Dvarka? But, um, you know, where, where um, you know, we hear that Adisesha is like the one, it's like an umbrella trying to cover him. So, so it's just so many interesting parallels between uh, the stories that we grew up as children and Baba's advent, you know? Yeah, and we haven't even touched on like uh, Christian stories and uh, Hebrew yeah. Bible stories and other ones, yeah. Yeah, you know, that would be so cool uh, to do that because I don't, I mean, I don't think we're very familiar with that. <laughs> Yeah, the prophet too there's a lot of amazing things about the prophet that are really just like baba oh. we know more about his personality than any other avatar except baba and there are many things that he did that were just just like Mayor baba could you give, give us one uh, story we have enough time well you know um uh, one thing that uh, just always amazed me uh is um you know baba would uh it, and I, I actually, I don't remember, I have to look it up, but there are stories where Baba would, he would want to be, have seclusion and he'd be doing his work. And, and he would actually sometimes, if there was no way to do that, if he's in a car, he would have a, someone take a blanket and just cover himself up with a blanket. And there's a story where uh, the prophet, I don't know if they were traveling, but he's with some people and, you know, he would get revelations. The, the, uh, to understand the Quran, you really need to understand and know about the life of the prophet because the Quran the the uh, revelations would always come in response to something that was going on in the life of the prophet and the life of the community and uh god would be speaking in answer to you know what was implicitly going on there and uh, so something was going on and and the prophet put a blanket over his head and uh, he was like that for some time and then he took the blanket off and and recited this revelation hmm. that's amazing yeah, and, and which is you know just ex exactly like what, and it's not like a common thing like like Bob would even have that in his mind. It's just this was the kind of sort of facilitating whatever inner work each of them was doing. It's very and there's things about their personalities, um, just the way they would. Uh, they, they, I remember a story, um, for example, uh, Bill LePage says this story that uh, Baba. When he was, Bella Page was there in the late 60s, Bob was very old, but they would, he would walk with Francis up and down, up and down the, uh, the uh, Modley Hall. And Bidel was this big burly guy in his later life. He had a beard. He was one of the great must hunters. And uh, he was very rough and rugged and kind of a uh, tough guy. And Bobo, every time he would go walk by Bidel, he would grab his beard and just give it a little tug, you know, just kind of affectionately give it a tug. And Bidel had been, I forget which one, there was a kind of an argument going on between the different Mondali, uh, Bidel and, and someone else. And on that particular day, Baba was uh, displeased with Bidel because uh, he had had this argument. So when he walked by, he, he just turned his head. He didn't pull on Bidel's beard. And this big tough guy just burst into tears and just was weeping. And there are stories just like that with the prophet with these big you know th these are like really rough rugged warrior uh muslims who had just been in in huge battles and they're all dusty and everything and and the prophet you know who's a relatively little guy like Meher baba would say something to them and they would burst into tears there's stories in the the uh you know the life of the prophet that he would he would have this effect on big strong men who would you know never show that kind of emotion but they just anything if they displeased him they just couldn't take it so there's lots of little things like that that are just so like baba that is amazing yeah, yeah. so I, I ultra quick picture thank you so much jamie i mean it does also remind me of um the you know the the story with buddha and the the dacoit right like he mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what's the name? Angulima or whatever. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. Angulimala, yeah. Yeah. So, and how he became his disciple. And Baba had someone like that, right? Who yeah, the decoy. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. decoy who became his almost like his personal guard at one point. He was a security, he became a security guard for Maribad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. those are such interesting stories. Um, I mean, we definitely need to maybe have another session and talk more about these because 
one of the things, especially growing up, you know, in India, we just knew a lot more about the Indian mythology, not so much about Prophet Muhammad or or even, um, I mean, it's interesting, like Jesus, we knew a lot more. I don't know how, <laughs> but maybe we've seen a lot of the movies. Well, there's a lot of Christian missionaries in India, and there's also been a lot of, uh, Mino Barucha used to do, make this uh, gesture when people were kind of at each other's neck, you know, but the Hindu Muslims can be like that. So there's not as much trading of stories, you know. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so while you get ready for your song, uh, Manya, do you have any special requests? This is the picture. Oh. oh. And then I think there's that's on center, I can tell. Yeah, yeah. Give me one. That's second. right near the barn, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tom told me once that he had hoped to build a house near the bar and Gator Lake area. And that, you know, back when people could still live on, build houses on the center. And then it somehow fell through and they didn't get to do that. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. That's all of that. Yeah. This is on uh, December 17th, 2021. That is 2021, last year. Wow. December 17th, we visited on Metal Beach there. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. That's Manjusha and Murley, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're going to do something for uh, for Murley's Washington group sometime uh, soon. I think in March. Awesome. You're you're a bad influence on the, this thing, Shilpa. You're getting us. Uh... Well, we're also doing you know on Baba's day after Saturday after Baba's birthday, we're doing a Zoom for Narshwin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're excited about that. So please, everyone, you know, join in. I think it is. Uh... I think there's a Zoom, right? Separate Zoom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So did Manya come up with a request? Manya, do you have any specific song or does it matter? Okay. Whatever you want to share, Jamie. Um, <clears throat> should I just do Ustad Danyavad since it's uh, my only Indian song? <laughs> hmm? Maybe you, me. Do you have anything? That we can learn to the songs that are small that we can learn. Yes, uh, this Ustad Tanyavad. Do you know Ustad Tanyavad? Yes, I heard it last time. You heard it last time. You want to hear it again? Yes, that's what yes. we heard. Okay, we'll do that then. I just want to pinch your cheeks. <laughs> Where do you live, Manya? Denver. In Denver? I've been to Denver. Did I meet you in Denver? Uh, no. I think you probably were very little when I was, if you were even just a spark in mommy's eye back then. When did you come to me? Denver. Denver. I came to, uh, did, is, it, is there Loveland, Colorado? Somewhere like that there was a Baba uh, Rocky Mountain Sahavas there. So it was, that's oh, when I, was. I have not been there. Yeah, I went to the, I went to, I think I've been to three Rocky, yeah, I've been to three but Rocky I Mountains. I live Auburn. on G Green Valley Ranch. But ah, well, I didn't go to Green Valley Drive. That's probably why I didn't see you. All right, let me play my song now, okay? Okay. Okay, this is Ustad, you know what Ustad Tanyabad means? It means thank you, master. And Mayor Bob is my master, so I say thank you. It actually means you are worthy of praise. So I'm saying you are worthy of praise, Mayor Baba. Ustad Danyavad, 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 Oh, Meher, Danyavad, Meher, Danyavad, Meher. Can you bad me here? Oh, me here. Can you bad me here? Can you bad me here? Can you bad me here? 
hoor hem als dan je waard. 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 Zartoos dan je waard. Zartoos dan je waard. Zartoos dan je waard. Zartoos dan je waard. Hoor me heer. Dan je waard me heer. Dan je waard me heer. Dan je waard me heer. Hoor me heer. Dan je waard me heer. Dan je waard me heer. Dan je waard me heer. Lord Ram, dan je waard. 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 Krishna, dan je waard. Krishna, dan je waard. Krishna, dan je waard. Krishna, dan je waard. Oh, me heer. Dan je waard, me heer. Dan je waard, me heer. Dan je waard, me heer. Oh, me heer. Dan je waard, me heer. Dan je waard, me heer. Dan je waard, me heer. Buddha dan je waard, Buddha dan je waard, Buddha dan je waard, Buddha dan je waard. Jesus dan je waard, Jesus dan je waard, Jesus dan je waard, Jesus dan je waard. Oh me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer. Oh, me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer. Mohammed, dan je waard, Mohammed, dan je waard, Mohammed, dan je waard, Mohammed, dan je waard. Allah, dan je waard, Allah, dan je waard. Allah dan je waard, Allah dan je waard. Oh me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer. Oh me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer. Hoe staat dan je waard? Ustad dan je waard, 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 Ustad dan je waard. Oh me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer. Oh me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer, dan je waard me heer. Avtar Meher Baba Ki Jai. Thank you so much for you, coming here, Zoe and Jamie. Uh, and I, I love the conversation and and i think we should definitely be able to do more of these and bring out the parallels i think that's just great yeah um thank you so much and uh um guys you want to say anything before we say goodbye and, and uh you know we have our next program go home Trinity. thanks jamie you're welcome oh hi ruthie are you another hi. tween I came late. I didn't realize you were here today. How wonderful. And I was singing that song so much today. So thank you. <laughs> well, you're welcome. Good to see you. Jay Good Baba. to hear the words. Good to know all the words or hear them anyway. <laughs> Jay Baba. Jay. All right. Well, thank yeah. you thank so Thank you, much, Jamie Baba, and Jill. Yeah. Thank you, so Jay Baba. Good to see you. Jay Baba, good to see you. Thank you, Jay Baba. Jay thank Baba. you, Jay Baba. Thank you. Hey, Bob, everyone. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Hey, Baba. Hey, Baba. Thank you, Jamie and Zoe. And, and being so cute. 
<laughs> Thank you, Manya. <laughs> Thank you, Manya, for that good story. Gee, you, you have to. Welcome. All right. <laughs> we'll see you next time. All right. Hey, Jay Baba. Wait, wait. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Ruthie, your hair still looks beautiful. Thanks. It's, you know, it's getting longer and longer. What can I say? Uh oh, we're recording. They should stop the recording. Although now I have it on.